Today's video is probably my favorite smart home project that I have ever done. See, we just got a robot vacuum and it's great and we love it. But what my wife doesn't love is that the charging station is big and it sits outside in the kitchen. She wants to put the vacuum in the closet, but if we do that, we can't run the vacuum on a schedule because the door is closed. So I solved that problem in our latest edition of How to Please a Woman with Home Automation. The solution, obviously, is to automate the closet door. Now, there are not a lot of out-of-the-box solutions for this. Yes, there are some electric door openers out there, but they are crazy expensive, they're large, they're not designed for bifold doors, and they don't integrate with home automation hubs. So I really had to MacGyver the heck out of this thing, and I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out how to get this to work. But now that I've wasted my time on it, I have actually a really great solution that you or anyone handy can do with tools you have around the house in just a couple hours for about 50 bucks. So let's get into it. First thing we need is some type of motor. I was originally thinking of using some sort of actuator, but with a bifold door, the door needs to bump out first before sliding along the track, so an actuator was not gonna work very well. What we really need is a motor that does a quarter turn with a decent amount of torque. Now I was struggling to find something until one day I was in my utility room and there it was, a quarter turn motor with a lot of torque. Now I don't wanna use my Zeus Titan valve shutoff for this project, but I did a search and I found this Jinju Zigbee Wi-Fi water shutoff valve that might work. Now I had my doubts, but for 30 bucks, I figured I'd give it a shot. Fortunately, it worked out great. Its size made it really easy to mount inside the door and it has just the right amount of power and speed to do the job. So with that piece figured out, we can go about building our masterpiece. Now I went through a lot of testing and a number of prototypes and I spent a lot of time wandering aimlessly through Home Depot to figure out how to do this. Now I'll spare you the hours of frustration, but this is what we wound up with. Essentially what we're making here is a motor with an arm and a wheel that will slide along a track to push the door open as it turns one way and it will pull the door closed as it moves along the track the other way. The other key to this project is that the door needs to be able to open and close manually when the motor isn't being used. So the arm has to release from the door when it shuts. That makes things a little more complicated, but again, we're in full MacGyver mode, so anything is possible. To build this, you'll need the valve motor, a drawer slide, a steel flat bar, a shower door wheel, and an assortment of nuts and a few other random things, but we'll go through this one step at a time. Step one is to place the vacuum inside the closet and see if it will actually work from there. I didn't do this step and I got lucky, but I highly recommend it so you don't waste a bunch of time. Step two is to mount the valve motor on the inside of the closet. Now you need to mount it so it hangs down below the door frame and that the pivot point of the motor should be just inside the inside edges of the door, as you can see on this top-down model I built for testing. As a mount, I used a 12-gauge galvanized heavy strap tie you'll find in the decking department of your Home Depot, and I drilled some holes into it so I could mount the motor at the bottom with nuts and bolts. Then I drilled a few more holes in the plate to mount it to the studs inside the closet with wood screws. I started with a thinner piece of metal and it had too much flex in it, so make sure you get the 12 gauge to make it work best. Next, measure the distance from the pivot point of the motor to where you want the arm to hit the door to push it open. You want this pretty much as far out as possible to give the motor the most leverage. It's science. Now take the motor back off. Drill a quarter inch hole into a half inch by one eighth inch thick plain steel flat bar. Cut the bar in half at the middle of that hole. This will create a notch that will hold the bar tight to the motor. Then use the measurement you took from the inside of the closet and cut the bar to length. But for my door that has 11 and a half inch wide panels, I wound up with a nine inch bar. You can use an angle grinder if you want a fun spark show, but a hacksaw works just fine. Be sure to file down any cuts and holes to avoid any boo-boos. All right, next on the motor, loosen the nut holding the little valve arm onto the motor enough so that you can slide the new flat bar arm underneath. Mark where the groove on the short arm meets the flat bar. Now, drill a hole in the middle of the flat bar at your mark to fit a small bolt that will hold it in place. Finally, drill a hole at the end of the bar to hold the little wheel. I'm using the shower door wheel I found at Home Depot that fits perfectly in the drawer slide track we'll be mounting on the inside of the door. Now we can assemble the arm and motor and mount it back up on the wall inside the closet. This nut and bolt will allow you to make some adjustments after the motor is already mounted in the closet, but make sure you use a lock washer with the nut to hold it tight after you make your adjustments. So that's it for our door motor, pretty sexy, I know. Now we need to add a track to the door for the arm and wheel to slide along. For this, we're going to chop up a drawer slide and mount it on its side but first we need to figure out where to mount it. To do this, I lathered the wheel with ketchup and ran the motor so it would leave a mark exactly where to place the track. There are probably better ways to do this, but I'm really hoping for that big Heinz sponsorship cash. Note where the wheel first hits the door and where it stops. Now we need to cut the drawer slide track to length so it's long enough to cover our ketchup trail plus the length of the angle bracket we're gonna use to mount it to the door. Again, the hacksaw works just fine, but welcome back to the spark show. After cutting the track to the right length, I cut a slot in the angle bracket using a drill bit and a multi-tool so we had some leeway to adjust the track after mounting the track to the door. 
We used anchors here because I have a cheap ass hollow door. You can also see that mistakes were made, but we're stronger for it and you should be able to avoid that by following these instructions. Once you mount the bracket in the motor, run the motor to see that it works. I wound up removing one of the brackets because the wheel was catching on the screw that was holding it in, but it turns out one bracket is all you need. You'll probably need to make some adjustments to the, make sure the door closes all the way and the arm releases. Do this by adjusting the position of the track using the handy slot in the bracket we made, or by adjusting the arm angle at the motor. Once you get this right, you'll have yourself a functioning door motor, and you will celebrate it, angels will sing, and future generations will read about your triumph, and anyway, it will feel good. Now we just need to automate the door to open for the vacuum. For our automation, we want to automate the closet door to open at a certain time, then run the vacuum, then close the door when the vacuum returns. Now this is easier said than done. The Ecovax DBot X2 vacuum I have is matter capable, and once matter is implemented, and there's a matter hub that works with vacuums, this should work a lot better. <laughs> but for now, there are a number of ways we can do this. If your robot vacuum does not integrate with your home hub, the easiest thing is to automate your door to open at a certain time with your hub, then set your vacuum to start running a minute later in the vacuum app. I know it takes my vacuum about 50 to 70 minutes to run a cleaning cycle, so I can set my door to open at 10 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when the kids are at school and my wife is at work. I'll set the vacuum to start at 10 1 a.m. and then have the door automatically close 90 minutes later at 11.30 a.m. And that works really well. If you don't want to guesstimate when the vacuum is going to be finished, you can put a contact sensor on the vacuum and on the base so it can trigger the door to close when the vacuum docks itself. Now ideally you have a vacuum that can integrate with your hub so you can automate the door to open when it starts the cycle, shut when it leaves the closet, then open back up when it heads back to base, and close when it docks. Hopefully when matter is implemented, this will be possible with my DBot X2. <laughs> Until then, Ecovacs has integrations with Alexa, Google Home, Home Assistant, and Homey. Unfortunately, the Home Assistant, Homey Pro, and Google Home integrations have stopped working. A little search online, it appears that there was a command change made in the vacuum that needs to be updated in all the integrations. All we have is the Alexa integration, which is extremely limited. So for now, we're keeping this simple. The door motor I have is connected to the Hubitat and is just set on a schedule to coincide with the vacuum schedule like I mentioned above. So while this automation is not as sophisticated as I was hoping for, hopefully we'll get that soon, you know, when the matter update happens. <laughs> The question is, did we please a woman with home automation? And the answer is yes. My wife is happy that the room is getting vacuumed and mopped on a quasi-regular basis, and we accomplished our goal of keeping the vacuum in the closet. Yes, it does take up a little more space than we want, but you know, so does my belly, and we've all learned to live with that. If you want to tackle this yourself, I'd love to hear about it, and you can see in the description below everything you need to build your own door opener. And if you want to see my full review of the Ecovacs DBot X2 robot, check out my review right here. Thanks for watching.